I'm going to tell you right now that winging your Mosky process doesn't work. I'm Elise, board certified oncologic clinical specialist, and I help physical therapists like you navigate their own oncology specialist certification process. As someone who's going through my own Mosky process, my first recommendation instead of winging it is to instead first understand some of the basics of the Mosky process. Mosky stands for maintenance of specialty certification. And this process is designed for clinicians who have already obtained their initial specialty certification in oncologic physical therapy from ABPTS. Just as you participate in continuing education throughout your career, the Mosky process demonstrates your commitment to lifelong learning and professional development in your specialty area of practice. The Mosky process is on a 10 year cycle with these checkpoints at years three, six, and nine. And then in year 10, you will sit for a non proctored recertification exam. As we already discussed, you have to first obtain your initial specialty certification before you can start on the Mosky process. So if you haven't done that yet, pause this video and then come back once you've done that. Now that you have your specialty certification, you'll need to submit proof of continuing competence in years three, six, and nine. This proof of continuing competence will include your PT license, which must be current and unrestricted, proof of at least 200 hours of direct patient care in your specialty area, ongoing participation in your specialty area, and we'll talk more about that here shortly, as well as a case reflection. The great thing about some of these requirements is that you're already doing that. For example, every three years you have to submit proof of your PT license, and if you're practicing, you already have that. And so it's easy to just take that and then submit it. And on that note, if you work with oncology patients regularly, it's easy to rack up those 200 hours of direct patient care in no time. As part of the commitment to lifelong learning through professional development category, that's literally the name of it, you'll have to submit proof of ongoing participation in professional development and service within oncology. There are three categories within this one requirement, and you'll need at least 10 Mosky credits, direct quote here, within two of the three designated activity categories every three years. So by year nine, you need to have accumulated at least 30 credits in each of those three categories. Category one covers additional direct patient care hours in addition to the baseline requirement of 200 direct patient care hours we already talked about, clinical supervision, mentoring, consultation, and other professional services. These professional services include serving on some kind of an ABPTS or specialty council board or work group or task force, item writing, being a subject matter expert, and more. Next up is category two, which is what I call the continuing education category. Basically, you earn Mosky credits for both completing continuing education, but also teaching continuing education. So like me, I teach at my local university to undergrad students, and I can actually take that experience that I'm doing and then use that for my Mosky credits. Additionally, some of the guest lectures that I do at some of the local PT and PTA programs also count towards this requirement. And next up is category three, which focuses on professional writing, presentations, and even research activities. Now, a special note in this category, this category separates the activities into peer reviewed and non peer reviewed, and they have different credits associated with each of those. So make sure to check the ABPTS website for more details here. With this information in mind, it's time to plan your Mosky journey. Planning ahead in your Mosky journey is not just a suggestion. It is a fundamental strategy for success. By planning out your path for your Mosky process, you can maximize the benefits that come along with the process, as well as reduce the stress that can come along with last minute cramming. Here's why planning ahead is so crucial for your Mosky and some practical tips for making your own personalized Mosky plan. Planning ahead allows you to set clear goals for your Mosky journey. You can identify the deadlines and the requirements and the milestones that you need to achieve along the way. Additionally, planning empowers you to be proactive versus reactive. You can anticipate challenges, address them early, and overall make informed decisions to create a smoother Mosky process. By distributing your efforts over an extended period of time, you can optimize your time most effectively. And this can prevent the stress that comes along with trying to meet all your requirements 
at the last minute, which reminds me, start early, start now. Starting early minimizes your stress associated with the Mosky process. Early planning allows you to focus on the quality of the professional development activities rather than rushing through them to meet deadlines. This means that you can select activities that you are genuinely interested in and that actually enhance your expertise. Starting early also provides flexibility in the case of unforeseen circumstances, right? You can adapt your plan without feeling crunched for time. So here's how to create your personalized Mosky plan. Begin by thoroughly reviewing the Mosky requirements from ABPTS and understand if there's any kind of special criteria you have to meet for your specific specialty. For example, oncology also has to do a case reflection. Define your goals for Mosky renewal. Are there any specific goals you want to accomplish during this process? Are there any specific areas within your specialty practice that you'd like to focus on? Once you've set your goals, develop a timeline that extends the entire span of that 10 year cycle. And then you're gonna take those goals and break them up into smaller manageable tasks and assign those to specific years within that 10 year cycle. Consider the resources you'll need to achieve each of those goals. These can include time, finances, but also access to educational opportunities. And then don't forget to actually then allocate those to those specific years we talked about previously. As you go, periodically review your progress through your plan. I would really encourage you here to set a reminder in your calendar because that will cue you, say like once a quarter, to check on your progress and your plan. Are you making progress that you said you would through your plan? Are you maybe not making as fast of progress? And this allows you to then sit back and say, okay, here's what I need to do, and then adjust your plan accordingly. Throughout this process, don't hesitate to seek guidance from colleagues and mentors who have navigated their own Mosky process successfully. Their insights may be invaluable, especially as you come up against specific challenges in your own Mosky journey. So now that we've planned your Mosky journey, it's time to track your progress. When it comes to the Mosky, maintaining accurate records is a critical, crucial aspect of this process. These records not only demonstrate your commitment to lifelong learning and professional development, AKA the Mosky part, but they also help to streamline the actual Mosky application process. In addition to this, in the event of a review or an audit by ABPTS, these well-documented records can provide proof of your ongoing education and professional participation, AKA protecting your certification that you have worked so hard to get and now maintain. Scary audits aside, maintaining organized records is going to save you time, effort, and frustration in the long haul. Now you might be wondering why I don't just recommend that you put your stuff into the Mosky portal as you go. Here's what I've learned as I've begun my own Mosky process. The Mosky application portal is slow and clunky. Seriously, the time that it takes me to input one entry into the application, I may as well just block like an hour to an hour and a half of time off on my schedule and just input a bunch of stuff all at once. Plus, it's easiest to have all of your details, all of your information already squared away. So then when it comes time to actually put it into the application portal, you can just plug and chug. Because what I've also learned is that going back and editing other entries that I've done previously also takes me a bunch of time and it's just plain not worth it for the stress and frustration that I've already experienced. I've learned I won't be doing that method again. And on top of this, if you are inactive within the application portal for any length of time, it will actually boot you out of the system. So if say you are tracking down some information on a different window or digging through your paper records to try and find a certificate that you did like a year ago, it will actually boot you out of the system and potentially lose any progress that you've made in that particular entry. So this is why I really recommend that you get everything compiled together with multiple requirements you've already fulfilled and then batch it. So here is how to track your progress practically. Use spreadsheets. Google Sheets, Excel are really versatile tools for tracking your Mosky activities. You can create different columns and rows for the different activities, the dates, the type of activity, hours earned, et cetera, et cetera, all in one very easy to find, easy to use location. 
Now, if you don't even want to imagine creating your own spreadsheet, I've got you covered. I want you to head to the link in my description box where I have created a free Mosky tracker for you to again, put all of that information into one easy to use, easy to find tool. In my free Mosky tracker, I've broken down the different requirements you need across the various categories, as well as included an automatic calculator. So you can determine how many credits you still need in each of those requirements. You can grab yours in the description box below. Now, some individuals prefer to use good old pen and paper to track their activities. Cool, just make sure you know where it is and you know where you can find it and also probably have a backup copy in case of disaster. Now, whether you use physical or digital ways of tracking your progress, you are going to need some kind of file organization method so that you can keep track of the CEU certificates and other proof of your ongoing education, professional development participation. Make sure to use folders or different tags on your computer, for example, so that you can easily separate and then find the proof of the different activities that you've been participating in over these past couple years. Remember, these are potentially certificates or transcripts or other documents you'll need to prove you actually did the thing for your Mosky credit. Now, I would encourage you here, make it a habit after completing every Mosky related activity to fill out your spreadsheet or your log. Now, this is different. Remember I said, I don't encourage people to track one by one in the Mosky portal as they go. I would encourage you use your spreadsheet, use your log and track as you go. So that way, when you make a once a quarter effort to go into that application portal, you can just take that information, it's all right there, and then just plug and chug in that bulky and frankly slow clunky Mosky application portal. This update your spreadsheet or log as you go approach is going to prevent you from forgetting any important details or overlooking any requirements that you may have missed the first time you looked through it. Remember, Mosky is a critical step in your journey as an oncology certified specialist. It's not just about the certification though. It's about maintaining and enhancing your experience to provide the best possible care for your patients. So as you dive into your own Mosky process, remember these steps. Planning ahead is your secret weapon. By setting clear goals, creating a personalized Mosky plan, and starting early, you can significantly reduce your stress and overall ensure a smoother process. Accurate documentation is your lifeline. Keeping detailed records of the activities that you do over this time period not only makes the Mosky application process smoother, but also safeguards the specialty certification that you worked so hard to initially achieve and now maintain. Lastly, remember that you are not alone on this journey. Reach out to your professional network, your colleagues, your mentors for guidance and support. We are in this together. And we are here to help each other grow and excel in oncology physical therapy because when your patient care improves, all of our patients get better and benefit from that. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to this channel, like this video and share this video with a colleague or friend who needs this information. By doing so, you not only support us, but you help spread this information out to other professionals within oncology rehab who also need this information. Together, we can make sure that all of our patients are getting the best possible care after their cancer diagnosis. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.